and most complex manhunt in Australian history, the search for a monster who was preying on young hitchhikers and burying their bodies in the Belangolo State Forest in New South Wales during the 1990s. After scores of false leads and dead ends, Clive Small finally nabbed serial killer Ivan Milat. Take a look at his story. Belangolo State Forest, southwest of Sydney. Seven young backpackers tortured and killed. When their remains were discovered in the early 90s, the biggest manhunt in Australian history was launched. Clive Small led that team that captured Ivan Malat, the serial killer responsible. And this morning, he lifts the lid on how the police got their man. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Clive Small to Studio 10. Good to see you. Great to see you. Um, you were in the police force for 40 years. Almost, yes. Oh, a, a, a substantially long time. Um, you obviously solved a lot of crimes, but what made the backpacker murders uh, so different? Uh, I think it became so significant and locked in the mind of the Australian population um, because there were seven victims, plus one who escaped. Uh, it had an international perspective. Um, even at the time, it was had the potential it was starting to impact on the um, tourist trade in mm -hmm. New South Wales. Um, and I think also the number of police that were involved and the publicity that was just given to it at the time. And the nature, and of, the, the nature of the crimes as well. Like it is something out of the worst sort of, you know, the, TV I, I, series or movies. Absolutely. Look, I think more than any other crime probably, the actual terror mm. that was created by Malat, although we didn't know who we were chasing at that time, but the terror created by the offender mm. um, really has stuck in the mind of the public in Australia and, you've written and this overseas. Amazing book here, Inside Australia's Biggest Manhunt. I, what was Ivan Milat like when you sort of clapped eyes on him? We had um, a number of tip-offs during the course of the investigation. 1.8 million pieces of evidence 1 .8 I think 1.8 million went pieces of information from a variety of sources including police records that were all hard copy and that mm. sort of yeah. thing at the time. But um, we had a number of um, tip-offs about, if you like, the Malat family, uh, about Ivan Malat and one or two of the other brothers, but there was nothing specific. But they all started painting this picture of uh, Ivan and some other brothers uh, being uh, obsessed with firearms, um, regularly shooting, a strange family, mm. all of this sort of thing. But again, nothing particular. And then we started getting a few tip-offs about him. So we also had, uh, which was really a, um, one of those magic moments in an investigation where Paul Onions, who was the victim who escaped, mm. um, uh, rang the police hotline describe what happened and we subsequently brought him out to Australia and he identified Ivan Malat as his abductor. Again, that didn't give us evidence about the backpackers, but at least we had... Ivan was a very good suspect for the backpackers. We had him for this one abduction and attempted murder. We could arrest him and get him off the streets. Mm. We could then mm. take our time with mm. sorting the rest out. But. I guess what I'm saying is that by the time we started the raids in May, um, we had a very good profile of what the offender should have been like. Cole calculating, comes from a large family, um, obsessed with control, firearms, all that. When you saw Ivan, when you heard him, yeah. he matched that profile very closely. So he, when he, you he, then saw him, heard him, yeah. what did you think? Did you think, we now have you, I've oh, got you? Look, when we saw him uh, on, uh, on the morning of the raids, there were 11 houses that we had to do. Uh, we dealt with... Nothing was to be done until we had control of him yeah. and his house. And almost from the moment we seized the house, the police started finding property. Yeah. It was a, a miracle moment. Uh, I don't know how many times during the day I said... I don't believe it. This is Aladdin's cave. Mm. And it really was like that. And um, you had, we saw him later in the day and um, 
you've had this feeling, though, that this profile we had of him, everything we'd been told about him being obsessed, being in absolute control, was exactly how he was, because I had the impression when I saw him, and we had a short conversation with him, he still he was still talking about, I don't know why you want to talk to me. Yeah. You want me to answer every yes to everything. Um, but you had this impression that he believed he was in control still. Um, I don't know what all that property is that's been put in my house, that sort of thing. And he had the impression that he'd be going home in an hour or two. Wow. Right up till the last minute. Yeah. And even then I thought he thought, oh, I'll get bail and I'll be home tomorrow. Yeah, because you look at the old uh, news footage there and he's got a big smile on his mm. face. I mean, uh, from your interactions with him, I mean, it's, it's fascinating. What, is, what was it like to sort of get inside and how much did you get inside, inside of a serial, I, I, I in think, the mind of a serial killer? I, I actually think that um, for the first few days anyway, Ivan was actually enjoying the attention. Right. He, he, he was enjoying the attention. He believed that he was controlling that attention. Mm. And that remained the most important thing for him, to, con to be in control. And uh, I, even later on, I think he thought, oh, well, I'm in jail for a few weeks, but that won't matter because I'll, I'll beat this and then I'll be more notorious and I'll be more in control. Oh, I just this hope he's... Mm. I cannot wish enough suffering upon that man. Mm. Um, yeah. It's a fascinating story. Mm. We could sit here all day with you and talk to you about it. Your book, of course, is called Malat Inside Australia's uh, Biggest Manhunt. It's, uh, it's just been released today, is that right? And it was released last week. Oh, OK. Week. Right, well, we've got you now. Um, it's a story that can only be told by the person mm -hmm. at the centre of it, um, the police operation. Um, so great sort of details and insights Incredible, into yeah. that, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. Clive Small, everyone, thank you very much mm -hmm. for joining us. Thank you.